Lads and ladies, welcome to podcast number 62. Coming to you from someone's sitting room, and not just anyone's sitting room, Irish rugby legend Tyg Furlong. We'll be asking Tyg all kinds of questions, including, which does he love more, rugby or spuds? (laughs) (laughs) Fuck, he's just looking at me now. I'm I'm afraid. (laughs) Any advice for us, Tyg, now, before we're doing Whites of Exford on Friday night? night? Run for your life. Not at all. Great town, Wexford. Uh... So watch out for the Scorpion of Faggot accents. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Queer bad son. Yeah, I got you in the tune, Johnny son, is it? <laughs> <laughs> what's, uh, it what's it like to go when there's a town, Wexford Town? A few nice pubs in Wexford Town. I haven't been out in the stores as a nightclub. It was the yeah. Mecca when you were younger, the Leaving Cert. <laughs> I was in there once, yeah. yeah. I was in there once. So um, was enough. <laughs> I was only 17 doing the Leaving Cert, so you're always sweating about going up. Like, you know. I say like, so that. So like, like, everyone knows the bouncers in there. Like, I say so. when you were 17, you were just bigger than the bouncers, anyway. <laughs> no, no, we seen, bouncer we seen the photo of you, lad. You were giant. <laughs> yeah. I was roundy enough, I would have to be fair. Um, but yeah, getting to the stores was the best night ever. Like, so you were in, Stevens night or any of them big nights you'd be in there at half nine and waiting for the thing <laughs> fit up just to make sure you got in like no one else in there like six yeah. other lads yeah but nowadays like there's some really good pubs around and stuff yeah. crack. you were in a few of the pubs down there I was I think Wexford is it's getting a bit cooler like there's I mean it's all the wine is there's craft beer there yeah. Like, yeah. Is there yeah I like, he loves that from me now but yeah. I like the old craft beer stuff down there they I, have, I, they have they do yellow belly and all that yellow belly yeah, yeah. that's Seems good to be going all right. not that you get to drink it you're no. on clean living now. No, I tend to stick, strictly stick to Guinness now when I'm out, to be fair. I thought you were going to say Luke's Aid Sport or something. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. That voice you're hearing, of course, is uh, Irish rugby star uh, Ty Furlong, who's kindly let us into his sit Star, room. yeah. <laughs> kind of sit. you like that, lad. Like, we put that together there now. How does so. that sit with you? Star. I wouldn't, wouldn't be overly... Yo, you don't like that? Out of it, no. Oh, lad, people were calling me that, I'd be buzzing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm begging people to call me that. <laughs> Two Johnnies there. Not no. me, no. Doesn't sit well, your team player, all that. that exactly, that. yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, what, should, you, what should we call you? Just Thai just Grand, Grand, Thai, Thai yeah. rugby player. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that'd be perfect. Okay. Um, growing up in Wexford, you were, thought, you were just talking about Wexford there, Wexford Town. What was it like growing up like? You were, you were raised on a farm. Yeah, so I came from, I wouldn't be too far from Matthew Hanna's house there, who you, yeah. you guys know very well, and you had him on last week. Yeah. You couldn't be more different. <laughs> Do you think? I'd say he's never got his hands dirty, though. <laughs> <laughs> he's from the farm as well, Luke Is there, he? be tipping away on the farm at home. He kept yeah. that quiet. Lad, he yeah. wouldn't be wearing them jeans down the farm. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Speaking Spanish to the cows here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Looking into their eyes. <laughs> I'm a cita. Lads ask you, like, living up in Dublin stuff, lads would be asking, like, you know, what was it like, you think you're yeah. some sort of alien coming from the country, like, when you move up here first. But, like, I, I just, it's we're, normal for me, isn't it? It's the way I grew up. And were lads expecting you to be down training, just dating Ross Buds or something? <laughs> <laughs> just, there's enough stories. Our nutritionist came out, i say it was last year, and said I was addicted to Spuds. And honestly, I was getting tagged on Instagram, and as far away as New Zealand, like, Irish road player addicted to sports which he was having a laugh and a joke about it but then people take everything like that seriously and it just went everywhere I um, I went down to YouTube pigeonhole yesterday yeah. just l- looking at a few interviews you done so that like we know like what to be saying to so. and they came across this clip Mara's going to just play it there lad. oh I can see if I can find it now this might be where, where, where that whole story came from I love sports like end of I love sports so Lads will tell you, everyone will tell you, I love spuds. Boiled, roast, mashed, the onion in them on the side, add a bit of gravy in there, lads, and it's a perfect storm. So if I could sit down Christmas dinner, just eat spuds, I'd be happy. <laughs> perfect <Yeah>. storm! <laughs> <laughs> Onions and spuds, perfect storm! My, okay, my, my father now would die. That's asking about the Christmas dinner. Yeah. Yeah. I think I went up in Lenser Ovi. Oh. And sure, I was only taking the mix yeah, and yeah. have stuff. I'd be winding the lads up half time. <laughs> I, think, I think my favourite favorite part was like where Rob Carney came on before him and was like, you know, the gallon of gravy you put on the dinner, and it was just like, I love sports. <laughs> but to be fair, know. I do love sports. I won't shy away from that. What are your favourite type of sports? Oh, sure. Look, pretty come in season at home, the curl pink or the British Queen would be pretty nice, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, like an old roast bud. Now, we had spuds. We had the spud there. Yeah, it was you had spuds. lovely, creamy yeah. spuds. I was actually fairness. full to the neck on yeah. spuds after that. We had, we had. Johnny How many? left the stuff behind him, lads. <laughs> Johnny left half the spuds in <laughs> the play. Oh, he left nothing after Johnny left behind, lad. Tight dusted it off, lad. I did dust it off, yeah. Did you come and put that to waste, lads? It was good stuff, lad. Well then, when you're training hard, how yeah. many spuds a day, Jan? You don't, I don't quantify how much you eat by how many spuds. Um, Sorry, there's probably a more scientific it, method now. Look, it, depend, it, look, it depends on, I suppose, on the day of the week it is and mm. 
you know, your oh. demand for calories really and your demand for carbohydrate which is sport so mm. um you know you're talking monday tuesday thursday which are and then you know leading up to a game mm. on saturday you're looking for you know high energy stuff so a lot of lads live for carb load and you always hear lads living for carb yeah. load and some lads love pasta some lads love this that and other sport. I stick to the spuds. I pick out in spuds. You can let go, like hardcore spud. <laughs> let yourself go. <laughs> let with yourself go. Get a few spuds. Because I, I look at, like I look at food, and honestly, I blow up. Yeah. I have to be tight enough. Like I know by looking at me, thinking yeah. you don't look after yourself too well. But I if I, if I, uh, I suppose over it or what, I just I can throw weight on so easy. So yeah. I have to be relatively tight Ireland win the Grand Slam for long in the dressing room just <laughs> nailing the big plate of spuds <laughs> no, they always have you love goujons my oh, favourite yeah, part of the chicken go. too oh. they always throw out, they always throw out goujons after a game for you might get a pizza slice as well in the Viva Good I, must, I must take up the rugby lad. <laughs> <laughs> I, give, I give it an old bet yeah I thought though you'd be just allowed to eat as much as you want because you're big and you're training so hard no it really depends um, like on a day off like you really have to cut back or mm. like on a Sunday after a game where you think oh jeez it worked hard yesterday can eat what you want you just can't oh I definitely can't but some of the lads yeah. I see you know James Ryan with us he can just put away food put away food put away food <laughs> and just still stay like a rake the poor devil can't put on weight Love so that. Josh van der Fleur is injured at the minute he's d- drinking Lucas Aid in the dressing room trying to put, keep weight on him oh, it's just some lads, lads have wow. I don't know if I'm lucky or not because like them boys have to torture yourself, themselves to eat food to keep weight on. Whereas I absolutely have to love eat that. Less and less. Do you know what? Like, you see some of the young lads, like, and even yeah. in the GA club, they're like, they can't put on weight, they're eating loads and that. Like, geez, if I ate like, <laughs> if I ate like that, like, they'd be rolling me in a wheelbarrow. I swear to God, I don't need to be able to walk. <laughs> I look at Mikado, I blow up. Dreaming about McAdams, lad. And uh, do you have to do wicked gym work then? Are you in the gym every day of the week? It or? depends. Like, usually you have one good, strong upper, lower lift a week. So, and then apart from that, it's kind of just prepping up for a game. Like this stage of the season we're in now, you know, it's pretty light on gym work. But mm. you know, most of your work is done in pre-season, and you know, I tend to kind of gradually lose a small bit of muscle mass as the season goes on. That's just the way it is. Yeah. Um, I suppose. We couldn't believe you, it. You were you were in. Camp today for what time? Seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I started. I start with the physio this morning at seven. Yeah, and it's a full day until four o'clock. Yeah, today is busy. Monday and Tuesday tend to be heavy days. You know, you're talking seven, half seven. Depends. Different lads, different mm-hmm. schedules, kind of job. But you be in early, um, trying to get a lot of injury prevention stuff done. Really, where at this stage of the season, everyone has knocks and bangs. And yeah, you're just trying to stay on top of everything so you can you know, get out in the field and play at the weekend. Man, that's like eight hours. You're just stretching and. I what do you be doing for that? You know? oh, handy enough. Um, so you do about what, forty-five minutes of like that prehab kind of mm. injury prevention stuff, and I actually got drug tested there today as well. Oh, well, is that where you have to pee in front of somebody? Yeah, yeah. Oh God! Um, do let you up? No, they're looking at us. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that must be that must be tough. I can't barely, barely go urinals. Never mind, like some yeah, fellas staring right looking at and you're in a cubicle, and then <laughs> just a some you. horror stories of lads. <laughs> So you can't go for number two without number one. So they'd be kind of looking, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Jeez, well, I'd be dropping off there now. <laughs> so led there from the drug room. <laughs> Why are they going? Yeah. Oh, it's that lady. <laughs> well, yeah, definitely, it's a garlic, definitely a garlic class. <laughs> tough. Jeez. Um, and you just have a load of meetings stuff, like mm. your Mondays, your review and your preview. And then you have a lot of meetings, walkthroughs, mm. gym session in there, pitch session. Uh, time goes for, by fairly quick. I'm reconsidering the rugby you now. There's was no it? money in anyway. Stay away from it. What's the Little Woods Ireland? You stick to that, lad. Oh, oh, yeah, that the, the, thing, uh, the corporate, corporate work, lad, is where it's at. And was it always rugby fair? Like, uh, like obviously, we've all seen that clip yet. Like, you know, tormenting some young lad at under 12 or 14. Is it like that clip on YouTube? Where you solo up the pitch. Yeah, yeah. Hand pass it off. Your man tries to give you a sneaky dig then why they're number three. But not happening. That's, that, yeah, that joke just keeps rearing its head every now and again. I, it is I don't know who or, uploaded it. It's or like, I don't know how it got there. But every now and again, lads are just like, oh, look what you hear. Like. 100,000 views. <laughs> is it? You, YouTube, you, yeah. you checked out. You, I looked it you went deep. Yeah. Yeah. I went deep, lad. <laughs> um, I was fucking... I suppose, look, growing up in Wexford, like rugby, there, there's four teams in each of the towns. For sure, every team has... Yeah, uh, a GA club or every mm. Paris's GA club really and we we were in a, sh- a shook enough position where we only had six boys in our, pr- our primary school class so everyone talked out oh, you know what I mean yeah. and um, but we kind of alternated and so I just love sport to be fair and there was no pushing and dragging or 
yeah. and on me to to go at it. I used to, you know, summer hurling the football in the winter in rugby. rugby. Yeah. Did you ever try the soccer? Right? I did try soccer for one year under well, twelve. Joe English used to coach us. <laughs> Anyone from camp I know Joe English. He's mad as a box of frogs. And if you were late or anything, I used to turn up from rugby training covered in muck and I was wearing rugby boots. Yeah. Yeah. Eight, studs, inch, yeah. eight, like eight studs, 20 millimeter studs in it trying to kick a soccer ball around the place. I played centre half. Oh, oh, like Mighty by me, sweeper. I'll never forget it. <laughs> Car- you know, the wing back pushes up yeah. and I go across and he'd fly in shouting and ball yowling in there. And when's the last time you played hurling or football? I played, actually went to watch Horace Wood play junior hurling. Jeez, I think it was down our Ladies Island there a few years ago. It could have been three years ago this summer, maybe. And uh, I went down to watch it. I was in a pair of like, shorts and a t-shirt and whatever. And uh, half time they were getting well bet and they asked me if they wanted to come on. So I said, jeez, I'd do for the crack. And poor Martin Furlan came off. He gave me the boots, the hurl and the helmet. <laughs> Where did you go on? I think I went in full forward. I'd I'd imagine full back. Ah, oh, like, you know, going, oh, yeah, we're up at eight point. Oh, Jesus. There's, like, oh, there's no fear of me moving too quick anyway. <laughs> How did you go I was all right, sir. Like you'd be rusty out, like yeah. I heard it's different poking playing. around the ball for the crack and then trying to go out and yeah play. Jesus Christ! Well, yeah, I played. I played all the way up through school. I, was, I went to the council in Ross, which would be mm. you know it'd be a good hurling a football school. Yeah. And um, yeah, I played all the way up there. I played a bit of Wexford underage and stuff like that. Tony Forrestal by Tony Forrestal. Did you play Tony Forrestal? I won, the Tony, won, Forrestal I won the Tony Forrestal. Yeah. Oh, oh man. man. I was marking a fella called Johnny Delahunty, and I found out not so long ago he's working in a car dealership in uh, in Waterford by. And uh, he, I was playing fullback. He was playing full forward, and he scored two points from play. But he gave me a woeful roast. And Chunky Curtis, a friend of mine, was cornerback. So every time he got the ball, he, he turned me. He used to pass it over Chunky <laughs> Taylor to kill it to me. His man scored one six or something. <laughs> <laughs> I still joke with Chunky about it. The two, the two points didn't sound too bad. Then. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and geez, that he was winning every time. If I didn't try to take the head off, I would still when he was going up for them high balls. I don't know what happened. <laughs> we ever, we, like we ever tend to just stay at the guy like no, that wasn't man. good enough. Like. Yeah. Uh, and you moved up to Dublin at what age then did you leave Wexford and go full time at the rugby I left school at 17 so then I would have joined no I was playing underage stuff for Leinster all the way up and sort of joined an academy a sub academy it's called um, in Donnybrook there and I spent a year there and that was brutal imagine a lad moving up to the country at 17 <laughs> college unbelievable you- crack but then you're in every morning at 7 o'clock like he it's kind of just to weed out you know who wants to do it or who okay. doesn't and then lucky enough I kind of started playing underage under 20s with Ireland and then I went on to a three year academy with Leinster and then that's kind of it so as soon as they bring you up at 17 you're trying into college like yeah I did college yeah I finished yeah. college I was lucky enough that well lucky unlucky uh, I had a few bad old injuries when I was in you know the academy which is probably from 18 to it's kind of 20 years of age and um kind of just ploughed into the college then just got, got it done what's your qualification in? I have a ba- I'm a bachelor of business studies no oh, way yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a good idea like you know that like you see it especially with the soccer players like they go through getting no education they finish yeah. they're fucked they're broken in a year like, do you know what I mean whereas like at least you have that and you'll always have that like. yeah they push it I mean there's f- lads in with us in the senior squad and then start to minute one of them studying to be a doctor Josh Murphy well, that's, that's madness isn't it that's crazy and then there's lads masters in engineering and stuff done Adam Byrne and like so many lads it's plans in crazy place. smart yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and any big plans yourself for after rugby or do you think that far ahead yeah look obviously I, I don't think I'd like to live in Dublin for the rest of my life um, and then trying to fit in like what would you like to do yeah. I obviously have the farm back home yeah. and stuff but um, even when the Oufala has the farm you know he was a butcher and a farmer at the same time so yeah. Uh, it's not a full-time gig so I was thinking of kind of doing accountancy exams because you know, it's a good fit for in, in rugby because you can kind of do them off in bite-sized chunks and yeah. do night class and stuff like that it'd be a good fit and then I don't necessarily know if I want to be an accountant but yeah I can't see it it's, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's a good qualification to have yeah, it's kind it of is, university yeah. you know what I mean no 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 100% it's a, it's transcends a, business oh. <laughs> the farm will suit more lad yeah say the farm will suit more uh, yeah, John Delaney qualified as an accountant and it, it's going well for him <laughs> I think it's, so. going, <laughs> it's going grand for him I've seen like during the week actually a clip showed up on Twitter of like Ian saying a few years ago and he's Ipswich manager like to run about in Ireland and France you know, Ireland yeah. looking for the game to be replay, pl- replayed and he was like who said that John Delaney don't trust a thing from that man and then like, the, like this video is going viral during the week <laughs> hey look do you know what I mean yeah. do you get back to the farm much uh, yeah I'm 
probably two twenty, two hours twenty down the road to the home place from here. Uh, so probably looking for a full weekend. Really, you're not going up and down for a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull her back, you'd be broke. Um, <laughs> but if you get home, yeah, love getting home. All the boys are still knocking around home and stuff like that. So and what's the, what, what's it like when you go home? Like, is it like your friends are obviously like just treat you normal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then people are just plaguing you. But are they like, or what's it like at home? No, it's not. Everyone, you, means, everyone means, means well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone means well. Like nice when you go home just to spend. You know, time with the parents mm. and uh, just see the lads and, and catch up. Yeah, really. no. visit the cows and yeah, see the see the crack with the cows. Yeah, wrestling up a few calves yeah. or something. You no, know, <laughs> keep it chill. Stay away from calf season anyway. Don't get a job. What was the story last week? Seen on was it on your Instagram? You yeah, were like bring the calf off a boat. Yeah. That that was down in Whitty Island. Yeah, my it? mother's place. And my mother yeah. comes from um, an island off Bantry Bay. It's about a kilometer off the coast called Whitty Island. Now, small island, about 20, 25 people live on it. And mad place, great crack, <laughs> unbelievable crack. Um, and Dunkel had bought some ca- calves in the mart. And it was my godfather actually. I'm sh- shit scared of him. He's a scary man, huge, like fisherman, hardy old devil. And um, he gave me a call and he was kind of. He was saying, "Would you come down to the pier? I have a few calves." And I was like, "Grant, I didn't understand a word he said." I was like, "Yeah, your pier, I'll be down there, yeah." So we got down anyway. See all the calves in the boat, and I was like, "Right." He was like, "Give us a hand, lift them up there, will you?" Oh, so geez. up the steps, boat in at the pier, up the steps, calves into the back of I don't know a ninety-one Berlingo van or something. With <laughs> the two wing mirrors missing, and <laughs> the door closed with bale and twine, and all oh, up the farm man. then. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Yeah, one thing that's some that's some absolute hardship. Yeah, I can't see you as an accountant, lad. One <laughs> <laughs> well, the calf said, "Have scour, lad." Did you ruin you, like, I mean, <laughs> didn't take to the boat very well, anyway. <laughs> and hey, was that like that was on your like you you the day off went down there for more hardship, lad? You're like, oh. yeah, that's good crack though. You know what I mean? My uncle, I swear, all my fam, I've only four first cousins in the yeah. world, and all of them are similar age to me. But every one of them is on this island, um, on Whitty oh, down there. So it's I spent so many summers down there as yeah. a young fellow. That seems like some crack though. It are, is. If you ever going material. down, the uncle has the boat in there. If you want to get like, uh, yeah. as a tourist, the ferry, the passenger boat, in there on uncle's boat. He has the pub, uh, bike hire. He's the postman. He's the Jeez, uh, he's, he's the waterman. He's everything. He's yeah. the king. You yeah. should be an accountant he's been for the him. Down there. Yeah. <laughs> Cash like, business, lads. Cash business, like, <laughs> that's the, the, the words of a great accountant, man. <laughs> and uh, hey, what do the other Leinster boys make of all this, like? Are they all from... Many of them are private school Dublin lads, are they? Are you the only proper country man in there? No, no, there'd be a few. Yeah? Uh, sure. Sean? Sean, yeah, Brian, all the boys, Peter Dooley from Bar. There's loads of lads scattered around yeah, the, yeah. the province. Um, you're probably getting more when you're... Like, all the lads now are so sound, they all know you. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Like, it's whatever, you know what I mean? But I found when they probably came up to Dublin first... And you're mixing in with the, the sort of, you know, I don't want to sound stereotypical, but the, the schools lads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. You know, you get a bit of a slagging or whatever. And you probably, you have a massive chip on your shoulder then to kind yeah. of prove yourself because you feel that they think you're inferior or whatever. I remember one of the first times came to Dublin, like, oh, it was for a tip game. And your mom's like, you all right there in the pub? I was like, can I get a can of cider? She's like, oh. Do you want a solid turf with that? Like, oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> they don't do cans up here. Like, well, like yeah, I, I, who was I to know that? Like, 17 years old. <laughs> 14. Oh, uh, yeah. But yeah, do you like living in Dublin for now, anyway? Yeah, it's nice. Like, obviously, training is handy. Yeah. It's handy down the road. It's down the road and, um, you know, when you're young, it's a, it's a good lifestyle, isn't it? Yeah. You can potter <laughs> out there. You can meet lads handy and all the crack. But you, you still sound like you do miss home, don't yeah, you? Yeah. Home is home at the end of the day. Exactly, yeah. You, know, you, know, you haven't went into the whole hipster lifestyle up here in Dublin. No. Right? You're not, that, like, you know, dining out in these fancy restaurants. Vegan places, lad. No, not for me now, John. They're no good for you, not lad. Not for me, John. <laughs> not for me. Spuds, lad. Spuds, lad. Down to Urban Hill, lad. Just play a sports there, please. <laughs> Class, no. And uh, World Cup's coming up. We're not going to ask you too much now. We don't want to be talking rugby talk. But, like, are them camps born? That was my one question. Like, you know, you know when you go away with the lines? Oh, yeah. Say lines to her, like... Eh, it seems like great crack when the DVD comes out. <laughs> yeah. But like, that's condensed down. That's an hour and 20 minutes. Like, you're on tour for, what, four, six weeks? Like, Lions Tour is different. Like, when you're yeah. in it, you're like, Jesus Christ. You're kind of saying, I've seen all these DVDs. Yeah, look great crack. Are class. Because you're broke up, lad, and you're on the plane every, every three days. You just yeah. don't get time to settle. You get no time off. You're always playing, and the pressure on you is mad. Yeah. Um, but then, towards the end of it, you know, it's good crack. Uh, but, but like, I suppose a lot of it is work, 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 and you have mm. to. You can't. You're not a tourist either, really. Yeah, yeah. And what's it like, you know, rooming with and you know playing with lads that you're trying to kill, you know, a few weeks later, like? 
With the Lions? Yeah. yeah. Most of it's got crack. Who like Everyone's gonna say you you change up. You don't get to choose. Okay, right. When it got to the sort of the test, you got to pick who you want to room with. But you, you completely changed up. A lot of times they stuck you with the kind of props or hookers just yeah. to build a bit of relationship with them. But but you could be rooming with some lads. Like you have to breaking them up in the previous Six Nations. Like I know that. Yeah, and towards <coughs> the end, I, I mean Murray, Connor Murray, room together. Uh, there's nothing worse you know when you go into a hotel room and you see who you're room with and you're like she's oh, not the formal not all these formalities again how are you yeah, and, yeah. You no know, getting the whole background story sometimes you just want to say nothing to nobody yeah. and just go to bed and be comfortable in silence you know that way you're sitting for the pole as you're sitting in the room like saying nothing for 12 hours <laughs> <laughs> staring at the room and to be fair Mako wasn't the worst of them yeah. he was going out crack um, some of the lads you know be drawing hen's teeth like yeah you know? that was that was down the pigeon hall I went down yesterday and you should be you're going in and you're like off your feet and he comes over and slaps you into the arse at full force like as if to say like come out with it you know like I was like oh yeah. I don't fancy that Jesus Christ he looks like a tough man Ernest Mako yeah he looks, looks like he like a dinosaur yeah. his ears <laughs> oh his ears are horrible yeah. look up Mako Vinopola look at his ears they're horrendous yeah they're uh, horrendous like. but I'd not be afraid of like giving away any tactics or secrets right now no today. no I suppose look all the coat no you're pretty open about it sure what can they do you can see everything you, on film yeah you can watch it anyway I suppose, I suppose yeah. rugby is so analysed nowadays yeah. where you're not really giving away anything really <laughs> they didn't really know everything anyway you didn't really know everything yeah Johnny saw it on YouTube sure yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> tell you lads all you need is YouTube rabbit holes next week I'll be managing fucking some, some rugby team now or something like that I'm woeful for YouTube do you know before you go to you know down the sitting room wherever before you go to bed you just go into this rabbit hole YouTube lad yeah, yeah. yeah. Watch are you going to our, yeah. what are you on lately oh lad I do you, like, I got mad into the military and like oh, do you know <laughs> and then weirdly enough I got into cruise liners and how they worked and stuff the boys I was uh, when I was over the lines I was watching all the stuff about oh god what was it airports how airports when you put your bag off how the hell did you get on the plane <laughs> and, and Conor Murray was with me he was like you're watching that airport <laughs> stuff again like, what, what's wrong with you it's like, I, I just find it interesting Murray. or do you know you listen to Joe Rogan or something then you yeah. go he's talking about something you're like what's that and you go down to another rabbit hole like. that's that's the thing especially with like if you hear something I think in the podcast like, I'd be I'd end up googling like some soccer clip now or something from the 90s yeah. and then like four hours later I'm watching a Paul Gascoigne documentary yeah. like it's just crazy like oh, you go those suggested you? videos are dangerous lads huh? oh, that's silly you be doing some YouTube when I say when you're out in the world in Japan lads it's you kind of like coppers you know you look at your clo- <laughs> you're, you're watching <laughs> coppers like one o'clock grand Jeez, yeah. you know still get a good night's sleep and fresh tomorrow next thing you look at it again half four and like how the hell did this <laughs> look happen? at it again Wednesday oh Jesus <laughs> yeah. it's like a vanishing time somehow it just disappears oh that's brilliant stuff any thoughts to go into management yourself down the line coaching yeah I don't think so no um, it's easy to say now but I don't, I don't mm. think so I think um, to be a coach nowadays you know it's very time consuming mm. you're away a lot you see the boys in Leinster now, Leo and Stuart, and yeah. they put in mad, mad hours. Yeah. Um, and then you're also traveling, like, you know, do we want, it's not easy to pick up a job straight after rugby in Leinster or yeah. in Dublin mm. or wherever in Ireland. You're probably going to up sticks and, and move. And yeah. It, it probably wouldn't be me, to be fair. Yeah. Are you a home bird? Like, I would be a bit one, yeah. yeah. I always. You no know, lads going on holidays and stuff sometimes I just love to go home or I love to go down to Whitty where it's yeah. you know, a totally Hello. different change of scenery and you know sun holidays as well like it's not for me <laughs> oh I'm terrible in the sun and, you know you always go out there like right right go away with Anya my girlfriend and you say we're going off to the sun here now wherever and you say right out in the sun beds now and yeah. you lash the sun cream on you but then five minutes later I'm sweating <laughs> and I'm absolutely boiling and then I'm kind of wiping sweat off but I'm wiping off sun cream as well and it's just grease and it's just not comfortable <laughs> poor Anya's out in the sun bed you're just in the room looking how bags get onto an airplane <laughs> exactly. I'll be out in a few minutes I'm <laughs> looking at all these brand new cruise liners like, the Caribbean is it some Caribbean company that they're unbelievable you want to see them I don't want to have to watch I don't the... want to go on a cruise I have no interest in going on a cruise now just to put that like, as as again it, sun cream grease I don't there, like it like. there's a lot of there's a lot of sun companies now listening like, to this podcast we're going to offer you a lot of cruise sun liners now, jet to right? holidays <laughs> Tyke Furlong next week lad TV ad come to the Caribbean pure greasy sun cream lad eat the raw spud of course like, big boy paddy head on me not about it careful when you're short yeah. <laughs> quick fire round Johnny yeah I have a quick fire round Tyke we finish this with um, yeah with all I guess so I already know this because we're talking about Barry's or Lions Barry's all Barry's boy who would you rather be right in the match England or the All Blacks oh, 
It depends when the game is on. Uh, I think All Blacks be number one in the world. Okay. Supermax or McDonald's? Supermax. Boiled spuds or roast spuds? Boiled spuds. <laughs> he looked at you. It's a <laughs> what are you talking about? Which Kearney is most fond of themselves, lad? Robert Dave? Robert. Robert. <laughs> Who knows more about growing grass? Sean O'Brien or Peter O'Manley? Oh, Peter O'Manley's... Oh. What, what, is he some sort of like a grass expert? He's, he's after buying like... You know the the push on lawnmowers. You see, yeah. go. Cr- he's bought the ones they use in Old Trafford. No, for where? For his back garden. Sure, you wouldn't swing a cat in it. Who <laughs> <laughs> brings the back here? I sure don't know. Just average. How long's the mouse's tail? I don't know. Oh, I've never in the house. That. Uh, but he's mad into the grass. Anyway, seen him on Instagram there, sanding and all that. Loves his grass. Saw him head. Would you rather Wexford win in All Ireland or a million euro? Oh Jesus! Yeah, it's tough, isn't it? Give me the million quid all day. Yeah. <laughs> Pay the mortgage. Pay the mortgage. Buy an Ireland. Buy an Buy Ireland. Ireland. A million, eh? Martin Story or Larry O'Gorman? Larry O. And lastly, Richie Cavanagh or Seamus Moore? Richie Cavanagh. Richie Cavanagh. I Cavanagh. love Richie Cavanagh. We always listen to the car there, eh? <laughs> Fagan's Chipper Band, my favourite. Oh. oh, my name is Johnny Fagan. <laughs> I'm a hard working man and I always wanted for to own a little Chipper Band. <laughs> a bah, a bah, and so- oh, go on, I love it. Oh, that's why Richie Cavanagh goes uh, to. His son threw us in a Richie Cavanagh CD one time into the car. Who did that? Like his son, oh, son. Richie's son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, John- Johnny is a t-shirt. Richie Cavanagh t-shirt. Stay with her, Johnny. Stay with her, Johnny. I used to love that when you do the video when they're going around the rally cars. Stay with her, Johnny. Johnny, stay. Yeah. Driver straight side. <laughs> Driver straight side, right, lad? I'm an awful man, not for German <laughs> girls. <laughs> she may do it. A handbrake tire, and I'm a woeful man to make the tires burn. <laughs> and the back of the singers, he has in the back of the yeah. <laughs> Stay with her, Johnny. Johnny yeah, stay stay with, with her, Johnny. Johnny. Which, which was the one where he was going around the place and he loaded was everyone dressed up as a chicken? Chicken, Chicken talk. talk. Oh yeah, I, I I haven't heard the song. Johnny, it's it. classic. Yeah. <laughs> buck 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 off. <laughs> buck buck. <laughs> Now this is chicken dog Puck, 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 And it's one, it's one, it's kind of a, a change of speed Where it's like, uh, he, he says a dirty word And he's like, man the chicken said it first And it went buck, 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 off And it went buck, 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 off Oh, that's Richie It's Seamus Moore Oh, Seamus Moore, Seamus Moore Big, big bamboo Big bamboo, yeah JCB, song Seamus Moore Working for the Yankee, Yankee dollar. Do you ever oh. see the live concerts of Ninny's in an overalls? <laughs> yeah, he's got he must be fucking sweating. Big <laughs> pair overalls on him, like. Oh, God. What a bad Seamus Moore. Two eyes, but still going. Jesus. Christ. Jeez, if Seamus Moore is listening, give us a show. Yeah, give us a show, Seamus. Oh, yes, Seamus. We'll have Furlong on the back and sing it last. Right, on that note, we're going to call it tight. Thanks very much. No problem. Thanks, man. <laughs>